Okay. So W. B. Ewers was not only a poet, he was also a famous dramatist. He was writing poetry and drama simultaneously. And his contribution to English literature as well as to the development of Irish literary movement was immense. He has been called the National Poet of Ireland because he made significant contribution to the development of Irish literature. Before W.B. Yeats, nobody heard of an independent existence of Irish literature. W.B. Yeats was thinking of uh, creating a new kind of existence for Irish literature. People of Ireland, the writers of Ireland were writing, but the literature written by Irish authors was considered to be English literature because Ireland at the time was not an independent country. Ireland was a colony of England. Um, Ireland had been a colony of England for many years, you know. Today, Ireland is an independent country having its own uh, uh, culture, having its own uh, uh, legal system, political system. But in the past, you know, when in the past, Ireland was not an independent country. Ireland had been a colony of Britain for many, many years. Um, Ireland, in fact, started becoming dominated by Britain from the 13th century. During the 13th century, the Anglo Normans invaded England, and since that time, the British rule started in Ireland. And from that time, Ireland could not be uh, an independent country in the true sense because it was always dominated by uh, British politics and the British administration. We, the people, had to go through severe pains and experiences because the people of Ireland did not have their own government. They were being ruled by the government of another country. You know that we had painful experiences of being colonized by Britain. India had been colonized by Britain and we had to remain a colony of Britain for almost 190 years. And we have the bitter experiences of uh, being colonized by that country or Britain. You know how tortured the people of this country felt, how exploited, how mass the people of this country were uh, exploited economically, psychologically, and in many ways, the people of India were being exploited by Britain when India was a colony of uh, Britain. And now see, and India became colony only in 1757. And India had been a colony of Britain for 190 years. And it is not that all parts of India had been a colony of Britain for 190 years. We, uh, the people of Bangladesh had been a colony of Britain for 190 years because of the provinces of India, of the many states of India, it is Bangla which was first colonized by Britain in 1757. And other parts of India became colonized by Britain later. So if we think of our becoming a colony of Britain uh, from the beginning, then we have to say that we had been a colony of Britain for 190 years. And we know the pains, we know the agonies. We have bitter experiences when we had to be ruled by the British government. Now think of the pains and experiences of the people of uh, Ireland who had been a colony and who had been colonized by Britain for, for hundreds of years. I am saying that in the middle of the 13th century, the uh, Anglo-Normans invaded Ireland and since then, the British rule, uh, the British started ruling Ireland, and Ireland became independent in 1949. So look at the time span, how many years Ireland had been uh, ruled by uh, England. When W. B. Yeats was writing, the Irish people were fighting for the independence of this country, Ireland. The Irish people didn't like to be uh, uh, didn't like to be ruled by Britain. They wanted to be independent because they were tired, they were exhausted of being ruled by foreign rulers. Even before um, uh, W. B. Years, other uh, people, the, for example, you may have heard the name of Jonathan Swift, whose very first travels you have read. Jonathan Swift also 
was terribly angry with the British rulers. Although he didn't think of making his country independent because that was not a time when he could think of making his country independent, but he was also very uh, angry with the British rule in Ireland. He wrote a famous uh, uh, essay that is called Modest Proposal. And if you read the Modest Proposal, you will see how much uh, uh, Jonathan Swift was angry with the British. The British were economically exploiting the people of Ireland, politically exploiting the people of Ireland. The Irish people were divided into two groups. The upper class people were given many more facilities by the British government. And the large number of people who were common people were kept under domination. They were tortured economically and in many ways. So this is how the common people of Ireland were being exploited by Britain for centuries, for hundreds of years. W.B. Yeats was thinking of independence of Ireland. The W.B. Yeats is W.B. Yeats should not be called a simple poet; rather, he was a kind of political poet. He used his poetry and drama for political purposes, because through his poetry and drama, he wanted to generate a kind of feeling of patriotism in the minds of the Irish people. This is very important. You will try to remember. I'm saying that W.B. Yeats is not simply a poet of aesthetic beauty. His poetry is no doubt a storehouse of aesthetic beauty. If you are reading poetry of W.B. Yeats, your mind will get soothed. You will feel a lot of pleasure and delight. You will see that your dead mind is getting out and when you are reading poetry of W.B. Yeats because W.B. Yeats poetry has represented the beauty of nature, the beauty of culture. Even there are many love poems that you will find W.B. Yeats wrote during his poetic career. But apart from being a storehouse of aesthetic beauty, his poetry served social and political purposes. W.B. Yeats was not simply a poet, he was a social worker and he was also a political activist. He wanted to serve his social and political purposes through his poetry and through his drama. You, um, you know that our Rabindranath Tagore was a good friend of W.B. Yeats. There was a friendship between Tagore and uh, W.B. Yeats because they were writing almost in the same time. Tagore was just, uh, Tagore was born in 1861 and W.B. Yeats was born in 1865. W.B. Yeats was four years junior to Ramindana Tagore. They were writing in the same period and they were almost had the same time of experience. And in the same political context, Tagore and uh, W.B. Yeats was writing. You know that when Tagore was writing, the people of India were fighting for the independence of this country. A spark of rebellion is paid all over India when Tagore was writing. In all parts of India, the people of, uh, the people of India were hesitating, were demonstrating, were, were fighting for the independence of this country. They are struggling. Their main objective was to make India independent of the rule of Britain. In the same way, in another part of the world, in Ireland, the people of Ireland were fighting for the independence of this country. All over Ireland, a spark of rebellion is paid out. And W.B. Yeats was writing in that political context. Our Tagore was also writing in that political context. So there is a kind of similarity in the political context in which both Tagore and W.B. Yeats were writing. But Tagore's poetry is not as political as W.B. Yeats' poetry. Tagore didn't perhaps like to serve political purposes through his poetry. His poetry is an, is a, is an about is the storehouse of aesthetic beauty. But W.B. Yeats' poetry, along with becoming a storehouse of aesthetic beauty, is also serving social and political purposes. W.B. Yeats, through his poetry, wanted to generate a feeling of patriotism in the minds of his readers. The moment, if you read W.B. Yeats' poetry, that means if the Irish people read W.B. Yeats' poetry, they would start loving Ireland. W.B. Yeats was writing Ireland in his poetry. He was reflecting, he was representing, he was presenting the beauty of Ireland in his poetry. He was presenting the beauty of the culture of Ireland in his poetry. He was presenting the beauty of the folk tales of Ireland in his poetry. In fact, Irish culture, 
Irish beliefs, Irish traditions, Irish nature, were well, the subject matter, subject matters of W. B. Yeats poetry. If one reads the poetry of W. B. Yeats, one will feel the beauty of Ireland, Irish nature, Irish culture, Irish tradition, Irish beliefs, Irish values. All these are things were reflected in the poetry of W. B. Yeats. So if one reads those poems of W. B. Yeats, one will be aware of the beauty of. Of, of the nature of Ireland, of the culture of Ireland, of the tradition of Ireland, one will feel that Ireland had a rich tradition. As long as you will start loving your country, you cannot think of the independence of your country. You know, we have a famous uh, national anthem, If a man sings this song or hears this song once a day, he cannot but be a patriot. This song plays a significant role in making somebody a patriot because you are singing you are singing or hearing every day at least once a day and this song is playing a significant role to the construction of your personality and of your character and the same way wbs wbs poetry is serving this kind of purpose because reading a poem of wbs is actually getting acquainted with the nature of Ireland, getting acquainted with the culture of Ireland, getting acquainted with the beauty of Ireland. So that is how W. Yeats was actually trying to instill in the minds of the Irish people a sense of patriotism so that people can love Ireland. W. Yeats understood that to make Ireland independent, what he would have to do is to, is to, is to instill, that means implant, a kind of love in the hearts of the Irish people for Ireland. And the moment the people of Ireland will start loving Ireland, they will work for the independence of this country. They will work for the independence of this country. The people would have to feel the necessity of the independence of this country. Until the common people of the country will feel the necessity of the independence of the country, the country will not be independent. A country cannot be made independent only with the help of military power huh. you are using military or you are using your that means you are using military power to make independent to make your country independent you cannot make your country independent a country can be made independent when the common people of the country start loving the country when the common people will feel the necessity of the independence of that country as we did in bangladesh the common people of this country participated in the liberation war because the common people felt that they are fighting for their own interest. They were not fighting for the interest of any particular political party. In Bangladesh, the people of Bangladesh fought for the independence of this country in 1971. Why did they fight and why did they participate in our liberation war? Everybody participated in the liberation war for himself, not for another one. It is not that to make someone the king of this country, the common people of the country participated in our liberation war. Everybody, the farmers participated for themselves, the fishermen participated for themselves, the teachers participated for themselves, the rickshaw pullers participated for themselves, because they were making their country independent. They thought that if Bangladesh becomes independent, everybody would be benefited. So everybody fought for himself, not to make a third person the king of this country. So when the people of a country start loving a country, that country will be different. That was the realization of W. B. Yeats. And that is why he was trying to generate a feeling of patriotism in the minds of the Irish people, that they would love the country. And when they would love the country, automatically they would work for the independence of this country. How to generate a feeling of love in the minds of the people? That was what W. B. was thinking. And he thought that poetry can be a good way of instilling love for country. That means instilling a sense of patriotism in the minds of the people. So he was writing Irish beauty. That means writing about Irish beauty, Irish culture, Irish values, Irish folk tales. Everything that was the beauty of Ireland was being reflected in his poetry. And he thought that this poetry would develop 
a sense of love, a sense of gratitude in his in the, in the, in the, in the, in the minds of his people. W. B. Yeats even uh, started writing drama. He thought that you know that uh, the readers of poetry are not as many eh, as the readers of drama or the viewers of drama. You know, when a drama is staged, many people come to see the performance of the play, and a drama can very uh, a drama can play a very direct role to serve a purpose. Poetry plays a, a kind of passive role. It does not play a direct, a, a direct role, but a drama plays a direct role because people come and sit before the audience, before the stage, that means sit in the auditorium when the drama thing is staged. And when the drama is staged, you will see that people are getting involved in the, in the story of the drama. You will see when you are watching a movie, you are getting involved emotionally in the story of the drama. When the heroine is suffering, you are crying. When the hero is suffering, you are crying. When the hero is beaten by the villain, you are getting angry. When the villain is beaten by the hero, you are clapping your hands. Why do you do that? Why do you cry? You do that, you cry because you are getting emotionally involved in the story. And when you are getting emotionally involved in the story, you are taking it to be something serious, something genuine, and you are taking lesson from it. So the drama plays a very direct role to serve the purpose. W. B. Yeats understood that, and he started writing drama. And his drama uh, was being staged in different places. And one people, and what was this drama about? The drama was also about the culture of Ireland, about the politics of Ireland. Indirectly through this drama, W. B. Yeats was teaching the people of Ireland that they should work for the independence of this country. So this drama, W. B. Yeats was telling the people of Ireland that this Ireland is their country. This Ireland is their country. So everybody was feeling uh, from the story of the play that Ireland is their country. This Ireland is being ravaged every day by Britain. The people were going home after watching the play with this realization that Ireland is a big country having its enriched culture, having its enriched beauty, but that enriched culture and beauty are being ravaged every day by Britain. Britain is doing harm to this beauty of Ireland. So the people should do something. Our drama is taking the people of Ireland a step ahead towards the liberation of the country. This is how W.B. Yeats was working for the independence of the country. W.B. Yeats was also making his speeches in different places of the country. You have to know the biography of W.B. Yeats if you want to understand W.B. Yeats' poetry. And if you want to understand how poetry can serve political purposes, how poetry can serve social purposes, how poetry can be used for the development of a nation, economic development of a nation. You know, in our society, people have a misconception about literature. People think that literature is is is, is nothing um, uh, economically. That is, literature is not economically significant. Econ literature is economically significant. Literature can play a significant role to the construction, to the development of the economy of a country. Literature can play a significant role to move people intellectually, emotionally, from one place to another place. You know, in our liberation war, we have many songs. The, the freedom fighters who are singing the songs are getting inspiration from the songs. The freedom fighters were hearing the songs and were getting inspired by the songs to fight fiercely, vigorously against the Pakistani soldiers. So if, you know, if we didn't have these songs, if we didn't have such films made at the time that inspired the people of Bangladesh to participate in the liberation world, Bangladesh could not be independent within nine months. Don't think that the songs don't, didn't have any role to make our country independent. Hearing one song, you are getting tremendously inspired. Your blood is getting hot. You are getting, your blood is getting boiled. And you are feeling that now, and now I have to go to participate in the liberation world. It is my duty. Bangladesh is my country. I love my country. 
to fight for this country is to fight for the rights of my mother. That was the realization that everybody had for these songs. So literature plays a significant role to the construction of economy, to the construction of values uh, that the nation has. W.B. Yeats' poetry is significant from that sense. W.B. Yeats' drama is significant for that sense. W.B. Yeats was moving from place to place, from one part of the country to another part, and he was making speeches in different places. Making speeches means he was delivering the speech in different places before people. And in his speech, he was also trying to make the people of Ireland that they should think of their country. He wanted to make the people realize that Ireland is a country having its own beauty, having its own culture. We have a separate entity. We have a separate existence, but we, are for, we have been made to forget our separate existence. We have been made to forget our separate culture. We have been integrated and ex to the to, to Britain for many years. And gradually we have forgotten that we were the nation. We had a culture. Our culture was enriched culture, was an, was an enriched culture. We have forgotten. So W years was reviving in the hearts of the Irish people that feeling that the Irish people had lost long ago. The new generations didn't have the feeling that Irish culture was a beautiful culture. Irish values were beautiful values because for long being dominated by Britain, that means these generations who are now living in Ireland are living in British Ireland. For hundreds of years, Britain had been ruling over this country. So everything that uh, that was in that country was made by Britain. And Britain developed a kind of hegemony through which Britain was making the people of Ireland believe that Britain was doing uh, good for them. But W.B. Yeats was telling the people of this country that it is our country. Uh, not to have anything is better than having things from others. The Britain, the British people are giving education are giving many things, but we do not need these things. We need our country. We need our country. So he was making speeches in different places of the country, making people aware of the independence of this country. And can you hear me clearly? Sir. Sir. Can you, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Can you, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we can. Thank you. Thank you. And another thing was done by W.B. Yeats. W.B. Yeats was uh, developing literary clubs in different places. He was organizing young people and he was developing literary clubs. Because W.B. Yeats understood that literature can play a significant role to move the people from this position to a better position. That means to, br to bring about a change in the hearts of people. The younger people needed to have a kind of organization. And literary clubs can play a significant role to bring about a change in the hearts of the people. That means literary clubs can play a significant role uh, to generate feeling of patriotism in the minds of the young generation. People will come there, people will read books. And what books will the young people read? The people will read books that talk of Ireland, that talk of Irish beauty, that talk of Irish culture, that talk of the last glory of Ireland. And when the young people would read these books, they will come to the clubs, they will read books, they will perform plays. They will be aware of the rich culture of Ireland, the rich values that Ireland had. This is what W.B. Yeats wanted to do. W.B. Yeats is the founder of the Abbey Theatre of Ireland, the famous theatre that you will still find in Ireland. The Abbey Theatre, Abbey Theatre, that is the National Theatre of Ireland, that is still found in Ireland, and W.B. Yeats 
founded, laid the foundation. He started that theater. That theater, that theater played a significant role to make this country independent. Why do we go to Shilpukala Academy? We go to Shilpukala Academy not to only uh, was dramas. We are also learning significant things from the plays that we see being enacted on the, in, the, in, in, in Shilpukala Academy. In the same way, this every theater that was established by W.B. Yates was playing a significant role in bringing about a change in the hearts of people, in generating sense of patriotism, generating sense of love in the hearts of the Irish people for Ireland. So this is how W.B. Yates wanted to uh, create a separate existence of Ireland. W.B. Yates was reluctant to uh, uh, accept this fact that literature written by Irish people would be called English literature. W.B. Yeats is considered, look, we are reading 20th century English poetry. We are reading 20th century English poetry. Why should W.B. Yeats be here? W.B. Yeats was not an English poet. W.B. Yeats was an Irish poet. W.B. Yeats was an Irish poet. So why should we be in these quotes? Well, that is called 20th century English poetry. Here would be English authors. W.B. Yeats was not an English national. He was a, an Irish citizen. The tragic fate of the Irish writers was that their literature is considered English literature because Ireland at that time did not have any separate literature. Literature, you know, Jonathan Swift's uh, Gulliver's Travel, who read it in English literature, but Jonathan Swift was not an English, he was an Irish. He was an Irish. You know, we will read Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, and we will read that play in 20th century English literature, but Samuel Beckett was not an English. Samuel Beckett was an Irish. The look, literature written by Irish authors is considered part of English literature because Ireland was colony of Britain. W. B. Yeats was saying that our literature would be called Irish literature. Our literature would be called Irish literature. Why should our literature be called English literature? We are not English people. We are not born and brought up in England. We are born in Ireland, brought up in Ireland. We are the people of this country. So everything of this country will be identified eh, as the things of this country, not as the things of other countries. We do not need to feel proud of English things. We want to feel proud of our things. So our literature would have a kind of existence, separate existence, a separate identity that would be called Irish literature. So he wanted to develop a new kind of literature in Ireland that would be called Irish literature. That is called Irish literary movement. He started a new kind of movement called Irish literary movement. His philosophy was that Ireland would have a separate literature that would be called Irish literature. So he worked for the establishment of Irish literature. He established many different clubs, literary clubs in different places of the country. He made his speeches in different places. He was writing his newspapers. He was writing poetry. He was writing dramas only to create a kind of opinion in his, in, that means in favor of his opinion. He was writing and doing all these things to create public opinion in favor of his opinion that Ireland would have to have a separate literature called Irish literature. That is the Irish literary movement. And this movement was started by W.B. Yeats. And that's why W.B. Yeats has been recognized as the national poet of Ireland. There were many poets before and after W.B. Yeats, but nobody has been given that credit. W.B. Yeats has been given the credit that he is the national poet of Ireland because he worked for Irish literature. He worked for Irish literature. He wanted to see a separate existence of his literature. So he, his contribution to the development of Irish literature, the Irish literary movement, is immensely significant, and in recognition of its immense contribution to the development of Irish literary movement, 
he has been acknowledged as the national poet of that country. That is very important. And the British have taken Ireland, sorry, the British have taken W.B. Yeats as a poet of English literature. They don't feel reluctant to accept W.B. Yeats as an English poet because W.B. Yeats is a significant poet. Okay, W.B. Yeats, W.B. Yeats is a significant poet. And I know that if they take W.B. Yeats with them, their literature would be enriched literature. There were many people at the time who were writing in English. From when W.B. Yeats was writing in our part, Nirod Chandra Choudhury was writing. You may have heard the name of Nirod Chandra Choudhury. He is from Kishore Gons. Have you heard the name? Is there anyone here from Kishore Gons? Is there anyone here from Kishore Gons? There was a famous man born in Kishore Gons named Nirod Chandra Choudhury. He was born in Kishore Gons and brought up in Kishore Gons, was educated up to class five in Kishore Gons. Then he, then he left Kishore Gons and went to Calcutta and he was settled there. Uh, although he was settled in Calcutta, he did not forget Bangladesh. He has a famous book named The Autobiography of an Unknown Indian. And in that book, he has depicted the beautiful picture of Bangladesh. If you read that book, you will see how beautiful Bangladesh is. And this book is taught not only in Bangladesh, in many parts of the world, in many universities of the world, this book is taught in English department. And people of the world have known about the beauty, about the culture of the people of Bangladesh from that book written by Nirod Chandra Choudhury. Nirod Chandra Choudhury finally settled in England after the independence of India. Okay, Nirod Chandra Choudhury left India and went to live in London. He was accepted there, but his literature is not considered English literature. His literature is part of Bangla literature. It is Indian English literature or Bangladesh English literature. It is not English literature completely. Our Madhushudan Dattu also went to England. He was writing poetry in English. He wanted to be as famous poets as Keats was, Wordsworth was, Shelley was, Byron was. Madhushudan Dattu was also living in British India. Madhushudan Dattu was not accepted as an English poet. He was an Indian poet. But W.B. Yeats was accepted by the British as an English poet because W.B. Yeats was so significant a poet that the British have thought that if they accept him, their literature would be benefited. But the interesting thing is that W.B. Yeats didn't want to be an English poet. He wanted to remain an Irish poet. He felt proud of being identified as an Irish poet, not as an English poet. Although he was writing in English, he was writing in English. Ireland had its own language in the past, but for being ruled by Britain for many years, Ireland gradually lost its own language and English became its language. Today, the language of Ireland is English. The W.B. Yeats was writing in English because English at the time became the language of the country. If Ireland had had a different language, perhaps W.B. Yeats going to write in that language. I mean, there were local people who were speaking in the native languages, that means indigenous languages of the country. W.B. Yeats did not do that. W.B. Yeats wrote in English, and that had another reason why he wrote in English. You can consider W.B. Yeats poetry from post-colonial point of view. Labib. You can read W.B. Yeats poetry from post-colonial point of view. You know, post-colonial literature is written in English. If you are, if, I think in this semester you are reading Tempest by Shakespeare. That play can be read from post-colonial point of view. Post-colonial literature is written by the authors of the countries which were once the colonies of Britain. For example, we are reading, you know, you know uh, Arkena Rawan, we are reading uh, Amita Ghosh, we are reading Nayantara Sagal, we are reading um, um, uh, uh, many other writers. Uh, for example, uh, Onita Deshai, these are post-colonial writers. You are reading um, Chinua Chebi, Things Fall Apart, written by Chinua Chebi. You are reading um, The Lion and the Jewel. So these are post-colonial literature. Post-colonial literature 
is written by the authors of those countries which were once the colonies of Britain. And this literature is written in English. Interesting thing is that this literature is written in English. Nirok Chandra Choudhury was writing in English. Uh, our uh, Nirok uh, uh, Arkanarayan is writing in English. Amitabh Ghosh is writing in English. Anita Desha is writing in English. Nayantara Sagal is writing. Vikram Sheth is writing in English. Arun uh, Dhuti Rai is writing in English. Homike Bhava is writing in English. So all these people are writing in English, although they are not the English people. They are Indian people, they are uh, uh, African people, they are people of other countries, but they are writing in English. They're writing in it. It is one of the characteristics of post-colonial literature, that post-colonial literature is written in English. And by writing in, by writing this literature in English, we want to let the people of the world know what we were. You know, the British propagated across the world that the Indian people were uncivilized people. And how did they propagate? They wrote everything in English because English is a lingua franca. The people of the world know English. When the people of Britain were writing about the people of India in English, the people of the world understood or believed that the Indian people were really uncivilized people. Now we are writing in English and telling the people of the world that what the British said about us was not true. Today we know English and we can write in English. So writing eh, our literature in English, by writing our literature in English, we are letting the people of the world know that what the British said about the Indian people 200 years back was off the mark. What is the truth is that we had this culture. So W.B. Yeats has written his poetry and drama in English just to let the people of the world know about the beauty of Ireland. If W.B. Yeats had written his poetry in any aboriginal or indigenous language of Ireland, then the people of the world could not know that Ireland was so beautiful a country. The culture of Ireland was so beautiful. The folk tales of Ireland were so beautiful. The Irish people were an ancient nation. The people of the world could not know if the literature was written in any indigenous language of Ireland. Because the people of the world do not know that indigenous language of Ireland. So W.B. Yeats chose the international language, that means the global lingua franca, to communicate his views to the people of the world about Ireland. So from that perspective, W.B. Yeats' poetry can be read from post-colonial point of view. That he is a man of Ireland, but he is writing in English. However, W.B. Yeats was writing in English because English was W.B. Yeats' language. W.B. Yeats perhaps didn't know any uh, indigenous language of Ireland, and that is why he had to write it in English. For example, in India, Arkanaran wrote in English. Arkanaran wrote in English because Arkanaran did not know any other language of India. You have uh, uh, heard the name of Arkanaran. Perhaps you have read, you read one uh, novel written by Arkanaran in your MA here, that is the, um, perhaps the, uh, what is the name of the novel written by Akinaran that you are reading here? It is perhaps uh, The Manager of Malpudi, you are reading, okay? Akinaran was reading, writing in English. Why was he writing in English? He was writing in English because he did not know any other language of India. India had hundreds, hundreds of languages, but Akinaran unfortunately did not know any other Indian language, any Indian language. He knew only one language that was English. Once a man, a, a journalist, asked uh, Arkanaran, why you write in a foreign language? Arkanaran got shocked, not shocked, but astonished hearing that. Somebody is saying to him that he was writing in a foreign language. Arkanaran saying, I'm not writing in a foreign language. I'm writing in an Indian language. That man said, English is not an Indian language. English is a Foreign language. It is, it, 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 it is the language of Britain. It is the language of the colonizers. So you are writing in the language of our enemy. Arkanaran said, for the first time in my life, somebody is telling me that I am writing in the language of our enemy. So for the first time, somebody is telling me that English is not a language of India. Arkanaran said that I have seen people around me speaking English. I have known people 
who speak English, in my home people speak English, this, uh, in my school, my teachers who are delivering lectures in English, my friends who are receiving education in English. So English is the language that I have been exposed to since my birth. It didn't occur in me that English is not a language of India. I wanted to say that English is now not the language of Britain or language of uh, the colonizers. English is now one of the many languages of India. Arkanaran said that the English we speak in India is a god is a is a worshipper of goddess Saraswati. Okay, the English we speak in India is not that language that is spoken by the people of Britain in Britain. The English we the people of India speak here is a worshipper of what is Saraswati. It means this Indian English language eh, is one of the many languages of India. That is why he was writing in English. WBS was WBS also had a similar kind of attitude towards English language. That is why despite being a man of Ireland, he wrote in English because English became the language of Ireland. As I am saying that for almost 800 years, England, sorry, Ireland had been under the political domination of England. The king of England was also the king of Ireland. Ireland itself did not have any separate parliament or separate king or separate political entity since the Middle Ages, not from Middle Ages, since the 13th century. And that's why English gradually became the language of this country. So W.B. Years wrote in English. So you can read W.B. Years from post-colonial point of view from that perspective, okay, that he was writing in English to let the people of the world know about the beauty of Ireland. W.B. Years had another significant um, chapter that is his love and you must know about the love of W.B. Years. W.B. Years loved a woman named Maud Kahn. And uh, we, we need to know the biography of W.B. Years and we also need to know about the love of W.B. Years because this Maud Kahn has indirectly and directly come to be reflected in many poems of W.B. Years. W.B. Years' poetry career was hugely influenced by his love with Maud Kahn. And that's why we need to know about this love that W.B. Years had for Morgan. It was an unrequited love because W.B. Years loved Morgan, but Morgan did not love W.B. Years. W.B. Years in 1889 met one lady named Morgan. She was a terribly beautiful lady. I'm calling her a terribly beautiful lady because she was so beautiful that anybody who came close to her fell in love with her. And her life was almost spoiled. His life was almost spoiled. W.B. Year's life was also spoiled by Morgan in a sense. We'll read a poem and we'll see how terribly W.B. Year's life was spoiled by Morgan. In 1889, W.B. Year's came across this beautiful lady. She was so beautiful that W.B. Year's fell in love with her at the first sight. Okay? So gradually W.B. Year's was uh, taking preparation to propose to her that he loves her. And uh, that lady, uh, WBS developed relationship, just talking relationship with her. And she, uh, the aim was that uh, he will one day propose to her. WBS once invited her to play a role in one of his plays. Okay. And Morgan. Morgan agreed to play uh, a part, the leading part in his play. And when he, when she agreed to play the leading part in his plays, every day she was coming uh, to do rehearsal of the play. So WB years had a very good uh, opportunity to come close to her, gradually a kind of uh, relationship developed between him and her, and W.B. Years proposed to her in 9, 18, 
91 for the first time. Okay. Uh, he proposed to her. He proposed love to her, but he was rejected. His love proposal was turned down by her, saying she said that she uh, could not respond to uh, his love proposal. The name of the play in which Mortgon played the leading role is Kathleen Nee Holen. Uh, Holy Hand. Kathleen Nee Holy Hand. This is the title of the play that W.B. Yeats wrote. And in this play, the leading role was played by Maud Gunn. The play was about the politics of Ireland. Here we see the leading character, Kathleen, is mourning for the loss of the four provinces of Ireland to Britain. Britain is cast away all the four provinces of Ireland from Ireland. And here, Kathleen is lamenting that loss of the four provinces that were taken away from Ireland by Britain. Look at the theme of the play. Morgan was also a nationalist activist. Who was Morgan? Morgan was a daughter of an army officer, British army officer. Morgan's father was a, a, a British army officer. Morgan's father was posted in Ireland. And when he was posted in Ireland, he was accompanied by his daughter, uh, Morgan. Morgan came with her father and she was living in this country. When, but Morgan was not, look, Morgan was not born in Ireland. She was not brought up in Ireland. She was not educated in Ireland. Morgan was born in England. When uh, Morgan was just four or five years old, Morgan's mother died. And at that time, Morgan was sent to France by her father for education. So uh, that means she was sent to a boarding school. Morgan was staying in a boarding school of France and she was being educated there. Then when was, her father was posted to Ireland, Morgan came with her father to live in Ireland. After coming here, after some time, Morgan started loving Ireland and she was fighting for the independence of Ireland. We don't know why Morgan was fighting for the independence of Ireland. The reason why W.B. Years came close to Ireland and a kind of relationship grew between them was that Morgan was also fighting for the independence of this country. W.B. Years was fighting for the independence of this country and Morgan was also fighting for the independence of this country. W.B. Years had a good reason for fighting for the independence of this country because W.B. Years was a man of Ireland. He was born, brought up, educated in this country. The sky of this country, the soil of this country, the nature of this country, everything that Ireland had was his. So it's very natural that W.B. Yeats would fight for the independence of this country. But why was Morgan fighting for the independence of Ireland? Who was Morgan? And what was her relationship with Ireland? She was not born in this country. She was not brought up in this country. She was not educated in this country. Her father was an English army officer. He was posted in Ireland. And Morgan came with her father to live in this country. And it is only some months or years she stayed in this country. And within this so short a time, she went against her own country, England, and was fighting for the independence of Ireland. And from this fact, you understand how volatile Morgan was. When Ireland is ruled by the British, thousands of British, hundreds, thousands of British are in this country. They are dominating Ireland. They're torturing the people of Ireland, but Morgan is going against her country, Britain, England, and she is now fighting with the Irish people for the independence of this country. And Morgan was leading a, 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 a secret underground party that was working for the independence of this country named Irish Brotherhood. That was a secret underground party. This party was led by Morgan. Every leader. Later, W.B. Yeats wanted to mean it that leaders of Irish Republican Brotherhood uh, were here not for the party, but for Mordor. It, 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 it was the realization of W.B. Yeats that people who were the members of the Irish Republican Brotherhood uh, were, in, were the members of this party, not because they loved the party, but because Morgan was the leader of that party. 
She was a beautiful lady. So all these members had a chance of enjoying the beauty of this lady. Yeah, that means they had the opportunity of coming close to this beautiful lady. Even sitting before or sitting close to a beautiful lady was also kind of pleasure to many. And that's why perhaps many people came here. As for example, you will read one play, one novel written by Arkenaro named uh, Meeting for the Mahatma. Okay. There is a girl there named Varuti. She is so beautiful that the hero of the novel had joined Mahatma Gandhi's party. And he is also fighting for the independence of India. But he is supporting the party of Mahatma Gandhi and Varuti, not because he actually loves India or loves the party. He supports the party and moves with the party only because Bharati is here. So if he is supporting the party and is moving with the party, then he will have an opportunity of being close to Bharati. So only to see Bharati from a close, uh, only to be close to Bharati, only to walk close to Bharati, only to stay close to Bharati, he is with this party. Mordka, WBS is saying that the members of the Irish Republican Brotherhood were with this party, not because they were loving the party, but because Morgan, a beautiful lady, is the leader of this party. Even WBS also for the time being joined the Irish Republican Brotherhood, which was a secret underground party working secretly for the independence of this country. Uh, Morgan was a leader of this party. What was the necessity of Maud Gunn's joining this party? What is her relationship with Ireland? We don't know why she joined, why she went against Britain, why she went against England, because England was her country. However, when WB years found that Maud Gunn was also thinking for the independence of this country, she was also working for the independence of the country, WB years invited her to play the leading role of his play, Kathleen Nee Han. She agreed and played the role, a kind of really, a close contact developed between them. W.B. Yeats proposed to her, but she refused her love. And W.B. Yeats wrote in her diary that it is from this moment, her life, the trouble of her life began. Okay. The trouble of his life began from this moment when he was refused by Maud Khan. W.B. Yeats loved Maud Khan so much that he proposed to her four more times. He first proposed in 1891, then he proposed to her for the second time in 1899, then he proposed to her for the third time in 1900, he proposed to her for the fourth time in 1901. But every time he was refused. Mordgan did not agree to respond to the love of W.B. Yeats. W.B. Yeats was feeling paralyzed. He was feeling mad when he was tilted by Mordgan. He thought that it is very difficult for him to live without Mordgan. But the refusal of Mordgan did one good thing to W.B. Yeats. W.B. Yeats could write many brilliant poems reflecting his love, his frustration that he got from Morgan. If he was not refused, but if he had not been refused by Morgan, perhaps W.B. Yeats would not have been able to write those beautiful poems that he wrote. So Morgan's refusal of W.B. Yeats' love did indirectly a kind of a good thing to the career, poetic career of W.B. Yeats. W.B. Yeats' biographer has said that perhaps Morgan willingly did that because she also loved W.B. Yeats. Morgan perhaps understood that if W.B. if she responded to the love of W.B. Yeats, responded to the love proposal of W.B. Yeats, W.B. Yeats could not be able to become a great poet. Perhaps Morgan understood the potentiality that W.B. Yeats had and she didn't want to destroy that potentiality by responding to her love because he was loving her so madly that perhaps he spent his life after her loving her. He could not give much attention to the flourish, uh, to flourish his poetic genius that he had in him. So perhaps that's why Morgan refused W.B. Yeats' love. However, 
WB years felt very shocked, disappointed, hard when every time he was refused by Morgan. But he did not cease trying to convince Morgan. He ran after Morgan. When he did not marry until he was 51, he was trying, waiting eagerly that someday his dream girl, Morgan, would understand her mistake and would come back to him. And that's why he was waiting for that. W.B. Yeats was seriously shocked and felt broken down when he heard that his dream girl, Morgan, married one McBride, John McBride. W.B. Yeats could not accept it. Oh my God, she would not marry me, that's good. But she would marry John McBride, that cannot be accepted. Because Morgan is a big zero compared to W.B. Yeats. If Morgan, sorry, yes, McBride is a big zero compared to W.B. Yeats. If Morgan does not agree to marry W.B. Yeats, how can she agree to marry McBride? Morgan agreed to marry McBride because McBride was a member of her party. And they were very close to one another because they were the members of the same political group, okay? They were working for the independence of this country. Their political ideology was same. That's why uh, Morgan married McBride. But W.B. Yeats could not accept it. That W.B. Yeats derided, moved at Mod, uh, the relationship of Morgan with McBride and derided McBride both openly and allegorically in many of his poems and his pieces in many places. Morgan was a man with a bandy leg. He could not walk well as a man jazz because one of his legs was shorter than the other leg. Yet this unpaid uh, person, ugly person, was liked by Morgan. W. Years could not accept it. Okay. After only some years, only some years after her marriage with McBride, uh, Morgan decided to divorce McBride because their marriage failed. And none under the sun became as happy hearing this news as W.B. Years became. W.B. Years became terribly happy when she heard that Morgan's marriage with McBride has failed. She is not happy with her husband. And Morgan is now trying to divorce her husband. Okay. At that time, Morgan conceived, and that's why Morgan could not, no, Morgan already gave birth to a son. Okay. Um, and that son was a son from McBride. Now, um, Morgan filed a case against her husband to a friend's court, but the court did not grant divorce, but granted separation uh, for uh, Morgan. So Morgan would be allowed to live separately if she likes. But McBride will have right to visit his son. This is how the case was settled. Now, when Morgan was living alone, W.B. Yeats was again trying to approach Morgan. Now, perhaps Morgan would agree to her, to his proposal. But he didn't dare to propose because he didn't get any signal from her. But once um, one biographer of W.B. Yeats has written, W.B. Yeats also wrote in his diary that he had an opportunity of enjoying the company of W.B. So of Morgan in one night. That means they had physical relationship. And, and that was the first and last moment he had been able to enjoy the physical relationship with Morgan. That was perhaps enough for W.B. Yes. For his thirst for Morgan's beauty was quenched by her in one um, night. Uh, in 18, in 1916, the Star Rebellion, Rebellion, that is called Star Rising, it happened in Ireland. And this rebellion was caused actually by Morgan and by the other members of her party. That means the Irish Republican Brotherhood. Okay, McBride was there. McBride was arrested. Star Rebellion, thousands of people were killed in that Star Rebellion. 
Okay, they need to know the history of Eastern rebellion. That means the common people were agitated against the aristocratic people of the country. The people of Ireland became divided into two halves. Okay, the majority of the people wanted the independence of this country, and a group of people who are very few in number didn't want the independence of this country. They were saying that they were happy because this group of people were given everything by Britain. Even in India, okay, it is not that everybody wanted independence of India. The common people wanted the independence of this country, but there were many people who did not want the independence of India. They were saying that they were happy under the British rule. And it happened in Ireland also. The aristocratic people who had the opportunity of enjoying almost everything that the British people were enjoying, they had free access to Britain. They were having education in Britain universities and they were sending their children to Britain. Their children were living in London. So these people did not want the independence of this country. Rather, indirectly, they were trying to tell the people of the country that we are happy under the British rule. But the common people did not accept that. And these common people were actually agitated by Irish Republican Brotherhood and other nationalist parties who were working for the independence of the country. So this star rising was actually perpetrated by the Irish Republican Brotherhood. The common people came out of the street demonstrating, killing the aristocratic people who were opposing the independence of this country. Many people were called. The British soldiers came hurriedly to tackle this situation. Hundreds of, not hundreds, thousands of people were arrested. Thousands of people were in prison. Hundreds of people were shot by the British armies. John McBride was arrested, husband of Maud Gunn. Now they are living uh, in separation because Maud Gunn could not divorce her husband. They are living separated. So John McBride was arrested and then he was executed. That means he was hanged to death. And when McBride was hanged to death, W.B. Yeats thought perhaps now uh, Maud Gunn would agree to marry him. Okay, all these days she did not think of responding to my proposal. Perhaps her husband was still alive, although she was living separated from her, but now she's completely free from that anxiety or that kind of moral obligation that with her husband living, she cannot marry another one. Her husband is now executed, hanged to death. So now perhaps Morgan would respond to her. W.B. Yeats proposed to Morgan for the last time in 1616 after the death of her husband. Again, W.B. Yeats was refused. Morgan did not agree to marry W.B. Yeats. Now W.B. Yeats proposed to Morgan's daughter, who was 23 years old. Morgan, before her marriage with McBride had married another French journalist named Lucien Melvolio. And Morgan had two uh, issues from her first husband. Okay. One was a son named George. George died in her, uh, one died when she was only two years or one year old. And Morgan loved her son so much that she could not think of her life without that son. When their son was buried, Morgan preserved two little shoes of that little baby. And Morgan wrote in her will, that when this was her will, that when I, my body would be buried, along with my body, these two little shoes of my son would be buried. That was her will. She loved her first son so much. Morgan also had a daughter from, from Lucien, uh, Melvonia. Okay, her name was Esiold. Now she was 23 years old. She was living with Morgan. Okay. W. B. S. failing to have consent from Morgan is now proposing to Morgan's daughter Esiold, who was only 23 years old now. W. B. S. was 51 years old, and that old man is now proposing to Morgan's daughter. So look at the love relationship that Mod W. Years had 
with more fun. He said, felt very happy that an old man, after failing to have consent from my mother, is proposing to me. She was laughing. Okay. However, she did not just agree. WB years now married one lady named Georgie Hyde Lee. Okay. Uh, she was also a very young lady. There was a big age gap between WB years and his wife. But WB years wanted to prove in his poems that he was very happy with his wife. He was happy, very, very happy with his wife, although perhaps he was not so happy because he married almost at the end of his life when he was 51 year, 51 years old. So this is the life um, of WB years. So, so many things you need to remember when you are reading WB years because his biography will play a very significant role when we are reading WB years poetry. We will read one poem first. You will see how Maud Gon is playing a significant role there. You will find the presence of Maud Gon in many uh, of the poems written by W.B. Years. We'll read one poem named No Second Troy. If you have mobile phone, you can, you, can, you, can, you can download the poem or you can open the poem, No Second Troy. The title of the poem is No Second Troy, written by W.B. Years. This poem was written by W.B. Years after he failed to have love from Maud Gon. W. Yes. Uh, represented his love for what gone in this poem. This poem is considered. Sir. To... What are you? Sir, Afra, sir. Nine batch tickets, sir. What is your name? Sir, Afra, sir. Sir, what is your name? Do you need to talk to me about the class? Sir, come to my class is being recorded. You will talk to me about the syllabus uh, at, at the end of the class. Okay. You do not need to have the syllabus. I'm teaching you no second try. Open the poem. No second try. It is in your syllabus. Okay. And you will talk to me about syllabus and other things when um, I'm not in the class. And at the end of the class, I will ask you whether you need to do them. Don't disturb my class. So why should I look? Come, come to no second try. Uh, this is a very suggestive poem. No second try. It was written by W.B. Years after he failed to love from Maud Gon. This poem is considered by many people to be one of the most famous poems of W.B. Years. Many say that W.B. Years uh, glorified his Maud Gon in this poem, expressed his magnificent love that he had for Maud Gon, but I don't find any love in this poem. Rather, I see W.B. Years has expressed his anger, his hatred, his bitterness that he had towards Maud Gon. Male critics are interpreting this poem to be to be a poem yeah, expressing W.B. Yeats' love for Morgan. Many people are saying that Morgan has been glorified in this poem. You will see whether Morgan is glorified in this poem or not. So come, why should you, you can open the poem if you have the text book close to you, or you can open it, the poem in your mobile phone. The title of the poem: No Second Try. No second try. Why shall I blame her that she filled my days with misery, or that she of late having taught or to ignorant men most violent ways? Look at the first line. W. Yates is ask, asking a question. Why should I blame her that she filled my days with misery? I don't want to blame her that she filled my life with misery. W.B. Years will not blame her. Her means Maud Gunn. W.B. Years will not Maud Gunn, will not blame Maud Gunn that she filled her life with misery. Or that she of late, would of late have taught to ignorant men most violent ways. I'll not blame Maud Gunn that recently she has instigated the ignorant, innocent common people of this country to go against the aristocratic people of this country. Mordgon is now instigating, inspiring, 
okay encouraging the common people of the country to be rebellious and to go against the uh, aristocratic people of the country what gone is leading these people to kill the other people of this country and for that i will not blame what gun amader desher মানে মনে করো এক সময় এরকম হতো পার্লামেন্ট তারপর টেলিভিশনে প্রচার করতো যে আমাদের এই ভাই মনে করো তার নাম মতি একজন পার্লামেন্টারিয়ান বলল মতি ভাই যখন ইউনিয়ন পরিষদের চেয়ারম্যান ছিলেন তখন উনি গোম চুরি করেছিলেন এবং গোম চুরি করার অপরাধে এলাকার মানুষজন ওনাকে ধরে ওনার গলায় জুতার মালা দিয়ে সারা এলাকায় ঘুরিয়েছিলেন সেই অপবিত্র কথা এই পবিত্র সংসদে বলে আমি সংসদের পবিত্রতা নষ্ট করতে চাই সব কিন্তু বলা হয়ে গেল মানে এই নাক্যজনক কথা এই মহান সংসদে বলে সংসদের পবিত্রতা আমি নষ্ট করতে চাইবে বলা কিন্তু সব হয়ে গেল WBH is saying that I will not blame Morgan, but we see that WBH is blaming Morgan. Again, he's saying that I will not blame Morgan, that she recently instigated, led the people of this country to go against the another group of people of the country. It was, a, it was a tragedy really in the history of Ireland that when the people of Ireland were fighting for the independence of this country, they become divided into many groups. And one, they will now kill the English people, British soldiers. But instead of killing the British soldiers, one group is killing the members of other group. Because there is no, uh, that means there are differences in opinions between different groups, among different many groups. And that's why one group cannot tolerate another group. This group is trying to kill the members of this group, and this group is trying to kill the members of other group. Modgun's party, Irish Republican Brotherhood, instigated the common people to lead, uh, to go against the aristocratic people of the country. WBS is saying that Modgun did that. Modgun should not have done that. The next line is, uh, or hurled the little states upon the gate. That is the common people who were laid against the, against the, aristocratic people. This line is very suggestive, metaphorical line, how the little states up of the great. The little states means the common people of this country. And the great means the upper class people of the country. So the common people who are killing the upper class people of Ireland, well, when they should kill the British soldiers, instead of killing the British soldiers, these common people led by Morgan are killing the people of Ireland. WBH is saying that it is what Morgan did. This was the leadership of Morgan. And what could have made her peaceful with a mind? What could make what could have made Morgan eh, peaceful with the mind that she had? WBH is saying that Morgan had a mind that looked that nobleness made simple as a fire. Look at the oxymoron that you find in this line. They had nobleness made simple as fire. Look at the contradictions that you find between the words. Nobleness, simple as fire. Can nobleness, can simple be fiery? Eh. The Motgon had a mind that was made of fire. She had a fiery mind. And if a person or a lady had this kind of mind, that lady cannot have a peaceful mind. She cannot do peaceful things. So what could have what could have made her peaceful with a mind that nobleness made simple as a fire? Morgan had a very fiery mind, a terrible and violent mind. And as she had that fiery mind, she could not be made peaceful. And with beauty like a titan bow, and another weapon she had, that was her beauty. Her beauty was like a titan bow. Anybody who would come before her bow, that person would be killed. Morgan's beauty was very much like a titan bow. You know the meaning of bow. Okay. Morgan's beauty was a kind of weapon 
that she used to pierce the heart of people. If anybody was coming before her, he could not but agree with what Mount Gong was saying. So with that beauty, he was eating the head of everybody that was coming before her. And a kind that is not natural in an age like this. Mount Gong was uh, instigating people, enticing people to do that in that way in an age when she was not young. She was not a young lady that she would do these things in this way. She's motivating people, uh, leading people to do bad things. And people are doing that inspired by uh, Mod Gun. And people are feeling inspired, not actually by what Mod Gun says. It is not that it is not that Mod Gun speaks very logically. Mod Gun speaks very rationally. That is why the people are following what what Gon is saying, people are following what Mot Gon is saying because Mot Gon is a very beautiful lady. All these people are doing all these because a beautiful lady is commanding them. That is what WB Years thinks. Look, when WB Years has failed to get Mot Gun, he is now free to say whatever he likes to say against Mot Gun. We WB years thinks that everybody was like him. He once ran after Modcon, Modcon's beauty, and he thinks that everybody who was moving with Modcon was interested in her beauty. And that is why he was moving with her. WB years compares everybody to himself. He thinks that everybody was as foolish as he was. And the last line is that being high and solitary and most stern. Morgan was high, solitary, and stern. These are not actually bad qualities. A leader has to have these qualities. A leader has to be stern. If you are very simple, chief, if everybody has access to you, then you will see that you will not be respected by people to be a leader. Common people like that person to be a leader who is strong. A very easygoing man, a simple-minded person is never liked as a leader. A leader has to be strong. strong. A leader has to have a strong personality. But W.B. Years is saying that she had a strong, well, a strong personality. And she was solitary. Obviously, a leader has to be solitary. It's not that you will go and take tea with everybody in a tea stall. A leader has to be behind the curtain. A leader should not come to the fore with the other soldiers. And a leader who has done that eh, has to accept a very bad fate. In all countries, you will see. Look at the political history of different countries of the world. You will see that a leader who was free to keep company with everybody was forced to accept a very tragic fate. So a leader has to be solitary and she was high. Obviously, she has to be high because she is not a common lady. She was educated from a French university. She was born in an army officer's family, a daughter of an aristocratic family. She would have to be high. So these are not bad qualities. She was high and that is why WB years failed to gate her love. She was so stern and that's why WB years failed to gate her love. But all these qualities are now considered to be bad qualities by WB years. Okay, the grapes are sour when they are out of place. WB years ran after Mod Gone for these qualities. But when WB years has failed to have Mod Gone as his wife, now all these good qualities for which he was interested in her eh, have become bad qualities to WB years. Why? It happens. You will see that only for your beautiful eyes, for your beautiful ear, for your beautiful hair, somebody is running after you. But when that person will fail to get you, those hair will be very bad hair. Those eyes will be very bad eyes. Your good qualities eh, for which somebody was running after you will be bad qualities to him when he will fail to get you as his girlfriend or wife. WB years is treating what got in that way. And WB years is now saying, why? What could she have done? 
being what she is. This is what Morgan. And being what she was, what could she have done? This is the character of Morgan. These are the qualities of Morgan. Yeah. So with these characteristics, with these qualities, what could she have done? She argued for the party. Look at the Nari, Jasha, Jeshondo, Judy, Manusha, Monbulano, Matakar, Chester, Eruko, Prince of Mogoli. Look at the Nari, keep Halukas for it. What good thing will she do when she had this kind of qualities? Okay. So, was there another toy for her to earn? Was there another toy that she would go to burn that? Look at the comparison between. Morgan and Helen, you know, Helen was the most beautiful lady. She's still believed to be the most beautiful lady of the world. She was beautiful and that's why she was kidnapped by Paris. And for that, Troy was destroyed, burned to ashes. The Trojan civilization came to an end. The soldiers of Sparta destroyed Troy completely. And Helen is considered responsible for the destruction of Troy. And Morgan is responsible for the destruction of Ireland. W.B. Yates is comparing Morgan to Helen. Was there another Troy that she would burn? As she did not find another Troy, she was burning Ireland. Look how uh, Hamas, W.B. Yates, loves Morgan. Okay, W.B. Yates is loving Morgan by comparing her to Helen. Helen was guilty, responsible for the destruction of Troy, and W.B. Yates is holding Morgan responsible for the destruction of Ireland. This is how W.B. Yates has loved Morgan. This is how W.B. Yates is honoring Morgan. This, you will read the uh, analysis of this poem in different notebooks. You will see that all critics, like Ram Jilal, Shen Jilal, Teluk Jilal, there are many lulls in Indian market. All these people are saying that W.B. Yeats' love for Morgan has been expressed in this poem. And W.B. Yeats has glorified Morgan. I don't find any love here. I find the kind of hatred that W.B. Yeats had in his heart for Morgan that he has expressed in this poem. If W.B. Yeats had, had, had really loved Morgan, he could not have written this poem. I think if Morgan was alive and if if it was in 21st century, Morgan would have gone to a court to find a case against W.B. Yeats. It's a defaming, it, it is a slanderous poem. Okay, it's a slanderous poem. Morgan's honor has been insulted. W.B. Yeats, by writing this poem, has insulted Morgan, has not glorified and honored Morgan. I don't think so. It is my personal estimate, you will see. But male critics, and I have heard many famous teachers of English language and literature who interpret this poem in this way that W.B. Yeats' love for Morgan has been expressed in this poem. Morgan has been glorified, honored by W.B. Yeats in this poem. His immortal love for Morgan has been glorified in this poem. I don't find any love in this poem. I find a man's heart that is filled with vitriolic feelings, okay, hatred expressed in the poem. So this is a poem that W. B. S. has written uh, to honor Morgan. Morgan did not marry W. B. Yeats because although the purposes of both the persons were the same, W. B. Yeats wanted to see independent, see Ireland independent. He wanted to make Ireland independent. Morgan also works for the independence of Ireland. So the objectives of these two persons were the same, but the differences were in the ideology. W.B. Yeats believed in non-violent movement, like Mahatma Gandhi. As Mahatma Gandhi wanted to make India independent by following a non-violent way, not by killing the British soldiers, not by killing the British people, but by loving them. We will sing and we love the British, and one day the British would leave this country and India would be independent. This is what Mahatma Gandhi thought. Sarat Chandra Bosu and Subhash Bosu. 
they did not accept it. They didn't accept it. They followed a violent way. They, with pen in our hand, eh, with books in our hands, by writing songs, by singing songs, if anybody thinks we would be able to drive away the British from India, so you will not find any greater mads in anywhere in the world than us who live so in India. So to drive away the British from India, what we have to have in our hands are weapons, swords, guns. We have to fight with them in this way. So the people of India became divided into two groups, one group following the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi, who believed in non-violent movement, and another group followed, following Shubhash Chandra Bosu, who followed violent movement. The same thing happened in Ireland. W.B. Yeats was following a non-violent movement. He was thinking that he would instill in the minds of the Irish people a sense of patriotism. And this is how one day, Huh? A kind of realization will dawn in the mind of the British people and they will wind their, uh, wrap up their colony, leave this country and go back. Mortgon did not think so. So Mortgon was following a violent way and W.B. Yeats was following a non-violent way. So the contradiction was in their ideology. So that's why Mortgon thought that this man could not be a good husband for me because his mentality, his thoughts, ideas are different from my mentality, my philosophy, my ideology. He thinks in a different way. I think in a different way. If two persons do not think in a similar way, there cannot be a mess between the two hearts. Marriage is not actually a marriage between two bodies. Marriage has to be a marriage between two souls, two hearts. Both the persons would have to think in an identical way, in a similar way. But Mortgon understood, Mortgon was very intelligent, having the capacity of understanding the reality of what would happen to her if she married Dr. years. A man who does not have any common sense, who runs after the beauty of a woman, eh, proposes to her four times shamelessly, having no business of her, of his own, that person cannot be her husband. So Morgan really understood that W. B. Years would not be her good husband. And that's why she didn't agree to get married to him. But W. B. Years is blaming her for not responding to his love in that way. Come to another poem. We have many poems and we have very few classes. Okay. Our class will end at 530. Sorry, past thirty. Sorry, past. I I Come to another point. We'll read another point. W. B. Yeats' love is very important. You will try to uh, understand the love affair of W. B. Yeats with Mort Gon. You will also try to understand why Mort Gon did not agree to marry W. B. Yeats. I think Mort Gon did the right thing by refusing W. B. Yeats. I also believe that eh, there has to be a, a union, okay, a mess between the ideologies of the two persons. Many families are breaking down only because the husband thinks in this way and the wife thinks in another way. And if the two minds are not working in a, um, in, a, in, a in a conjugal way, okay, then the two minds cannot live together. Good relationship grows between two minds, not between two bodies. By giving your body to your wife or to your husband, you cannot help your relationship last longer. So what you have to have is love in the relationship. And love in the relationship is possible when two minds are married. But when two minds think in two different ways, it cannot be. One lives in a violent way and the other lives in a non-violent way. How can two minds reside together? Not possible. And that's why Mortgon did not marry, married McBride. Again, McBride made a mistake. Mac, sorry, Mortgon made a mistake. Mac, Mortgon thought that McBride would make him a good husband. But she was sorry to discover that this McBride was not the McBride that Mortgon taught him to be before marriage. Before marriage, Mac Bright was a good person. 
showing all his good qualities to Mordgan. But after marriage, Mordgan found a number of bad qualities with Macbright. So before falling in love with a man, a girl has to be very careful. How many hours do you see the person in a day? After coming to campus, you are sitting under a tree only for two, three hours or four, five hours a day. You can have an opportunity of knowing that man, but 19 hours, you cannot see him. You see him only five hours. Another 90 hours, you cannot see him. So if you can see him, the other 19 hours, you could know him very well. That is a serious problem that makes our relationship failed after marriage. What one discovered that MacBride was not so good as he pretended to be to her before marriage. W.B. Yeats said that Morgan wanted to divorce MacBride because Mort MacBride wanted to rape Morgan's daughter Isolde. That means her daughter from her first husband. She was with Morgan. And at the time, Isolde was 19 years old, a growing girl as beautiful as Morgan was. So MacBride wanted to rave Isolde. However, this allegation is brought by W.B. Yers. Morgan did not write anywhere. Even Isolde did not say uh, anywhere or any day that her stepfather wanted to rave her. She expressed many things, but she never did this. So many critics are saying that actually it is a baseless allegation brought against McBride by W.B. Years, as W.B. Years could not tolerate McBride eh, just to deride him, insult him. Eh, uh, W.B. Years brought this baseless allegation against McBride. Uh, Morgan said in the court that McBride tortured her physically and emotionally. And Morgan also said in the court that McBride uh, drinks heavily. And that is very painful and not tolerable. And that's why she wants to divorce him. But the court did not find the allegation brought against McBride by Morgan was potential. Because after marriage, Mac Mort McBride only once drunk, and that's why the court did not de grant divorce, granted separation between them. So many things are there in the relationship between Morgan. And without knowing about Morgan, eh, it's very difficult for us to know WB years. Come to another poem, Leda and the Son, written by WB years. It is another famous poem. It is another famous poem means it is one of the most famous poems. That if if you say the W. B. Yeats had two best poems, he had written many many poems. And of the poems, if you consider only two poems, which were um, best poems, Leader is one is one of the two. Okay, it is so famous a poem. W. B. Yeats has written in these fourteen lines. Uh, Many things. Leda and the Swan, it's a sonnet. Okay. Leda and the Swan. Again, the title is very suggestive, like the title No Second Troy. The Troy, you know, Troy is a very suggestive. When you talk of Troy, when you think of Troy, you remember so many things. Troy means Helen, Paris, pa Helen was kidnapped, Troy was destroyed, Agamemnon, Menelos. Huh? They fought against the Trojan wars for 10 years and Troy was burned to ashes. So many things come to our mind when we hear the word Troy. So this word is very suggestive. It brings to our memory so many things. When a history of civilization is brought before us when we hear the word Troy. Again, this title is again very suggestive. Leda, Leda was the mother of Helen. Okay, the one name is very suggestive. When we hear of Leda, we remind of, we are reminded, we remember that birth of civil, Athenian civilization. 
Hellenic civilization. We remember all these things that happened in that civilization. So it's a fusion of history, myth, and years idea of civilization. But the poem is a very short poem. It's a sonnet. You know, a sonnet is a short poem consisting of 14 lines. A 14 line poem is a short poem. It gives you a very small space. And in a small space, it is very difficult for you to tell a massive history. But W.B. Yeats was so great a poet. He was a master poet, okay? His craftsmanship was so perfect that he could draw a massive picture in a small space, on a small canvas. You know, there is an artist in Kulna on a mustard seat. He drew the portraits of seven heroes of Bangladesh. That means uh, language marchers, heroes, Salam, Jabba, Dorko, Trophy. He drew the pictures of these seven heroes on a mustard seat. Like he was so good an artist. W. B. S. is also such a skilled uh, artist that in 14 lines, he has written a massive history, a history of the part of a civilization you know, and many other things that happened in that civilization. This poem is written in Petrarchian sonnet form. You will see there are, uh, you know, a sonnet is divided into two halves. The first half is called an octave that consists of eight lines. And the second half is called a sestet that consists of six lines. You will see the poem is written in four stanzas, although outwardly the poem is written in four stanzas. Actually, the first two stanzas cons constitute the octave that contains eight lines and the next six lines eh? that means the next two paragraphs here constitute the sestet that contains six lines if you uh, look at the uh, structure of this poem you will see that it is written in petrarchan sonnet form however uh, in another class i will teach you sonnet and i'll talk of the other features of sonnets this is a very perfect sonnet. A sudden blow. This poem begins in, in a dramatic way. A sudden blow. However, what what uh, things you remember when you hear the name Leda? Leda was the mother of Helen. One day, Leda was bathing naked in her pond. Helen was beautiful. So, you know, as the daughter was beautiful, her mother was also beautiful, like mother, like daughter as like for the like son, you say, Helen was beautiful, Helen's mother was also as beautiful as Helen was. One day, Helen's mother, Leda, okay, Leda was a girl, not married. She was a maiden. She was bathing in her pond. As this was her personal pond, pond she didn't have the fear that somebody would see her when she was bathing naked. So she was free to bathe in her own way, okay, in her pond. She was bathing naked. And just at the time when she was bathing naked in her pond, Zeus, the supreme god of the Romans, eh? she, he was flying over the pond. And when he was flying over the pond, he looked down and saw the beautiful naked body of Leda. And Leda's beautiful body was so captivating that God could not resist his temptation of enjoying the beauty of Leda. He came down in the form of a swan. But how can God come down in God's shape? So he disguised himself as a swan. Swan means Rajhash. So coming down in the shape of a swan, he raped Leda. Leda conceived and gave birth to Helen, Clytemnestra, and two sons. Okay. Helen, the most beautiful lady. No second time we have heard it. We have seen her. So this Helen was born out of this matting between a mortal and a god. And not a normal god, the supreme god. All these days, all these days, but this poem was written 
in uh, it was published in 1924 okay so it may have been written either in 1924 or two three hours before uh, the publication of this poem so wb years was writing this poem eh, in the second decade of the 20th century but leda was sorry helen was born with whose birth the athenian civilization began and wb years had a theory of civilization wb years believed that a civilization begins and ends it takes 2000 years a civilization stays only 2000 years a civilization takes its birth then it lasts 2000 years after 2000 years this civilization ends a new civilization begins so look if it is true then the hellenic civilization that means the civilization that was born with the birth of helen lasted 2000 years and again, then the christian civilization began and the christian civilization was also about to complete its cycle because it is in 1924 that means it is already going to be 2000 years so 4000 years nobody raised any question about this matting of jews with leda human beings considered this matting to be a sacred thing because Leda was, that means this, um, Leda was honored. People thought Leda was honored because it is not a man, but that the Supreme God came down and honored Leda by doing sex with her. This is how people interpreted it for 2000 years. Two, sorry, 4000 years. People have interpreted this fact as a kind of honor on Lida, okay? That Jews came down, it is not a simple God. It is not a lower, I mean, a God of lower status. The head of the gods and goddesses, the supreme God came and did sex with Lida. How respectful and honorable Lida became after being, uh, uh, after being shagged in that way by, uh, by, by that God. It was a matter of prestige. It was a matter of honor to Leda. And perhaps many people at the time eh, um, made effigy of that swan and were worshiping. This is the swan that came down and honored Leda. Perhaps um, uh, that scene, how Leda was copulated by the swan, that picture of copulation was also installed in many temple charges people were worshiping that effigy in that way this is how it was interpreted honored regarded by people for 4000 years but in 1924 wb years is challenging that myth and this centuries old interpretation and belief of people wb years is saying that leader was raped leader was not honored it was rape leader it was a disgrace it was an injustice it was a kind of brutality that that god did on leader on that day the poem has been written in that way so w yates is very courageous here he is very courageous when he defies the eight centuries old belief myth interpretation of people all these years people have considered it to be a sacred event in human civilization. And you will see in all religions such things happen. We find examples of such things in Hinduism, in Christianity, in Islam, you will find such examples. Just a few months, years back in India, we found Ram Rohim, a, a, a bond of peer, that Indian heroines were going to Ram Rohim. And Ram Rohim said that I did sex with them to parse them, to purify them. When I, 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 I'm doing it not for my pleasure, but to purify these women, I'm doing sex with them. And hundreds of women are going to that Ram Rohim to be purified. Let, by letting them to be, by letting them be uh, enjoyed by Ram Rohim, they are getting purified. This is the belief. Even still now in 20th century, people have this kind of belief. Many parents are sending their daughters to such uh, hypocrites. Yeah to get their daughters passed or, 
purified in that way. This is how people have interpreted such kinds of myths in that way. But W. Years is challenging that myth and is giving us a new myth. He's challenging that myth, deconstructing that myth, and reconstructing a new myth and giving us a new truth that Lida was not honored, Lida was raped. Look at the way W. Years has started the poem A sudden blow. Another thing is that W. B. Yeats was an artist and he could draw pictures. As he was an artist and had the habit of drawing pictures, he has drawn pictures even in his poetry. He has drawn pictures with words. Okay, when you are reading the lines, you will see a visible image comes to your mind. You see a kind of image of the of the of the of the of the, of the event that W. B. Yeats has narrated in his poem. Look at the picture of the copulation of a duck you will find in this poem. What is the first line? A sudden blow. Lida was not aware that anybody would come and would cast her in that way and will start raping her. A sudden blow. Oh, my mobile is not working. Labib. Just let me one minute. I want to. Okay, Baba, thank you. I am trying to find out the poem. Uh, and this one. A sudden blow. The great wings beating still. Okay? A sudden blow. Lida suddenly sees something is happening to her. She feels a kind of blow coming from her behind. A sudden blow, as the God did not take any preparation, Lida did not have any preparation to enjoy these sets. It was something sudden, abrupt, that came to her from behind. A sudden blow, the great wings beating still. It is, it is the swan, the swan is beating his wings. Okay, above the staggering guard, look at the word staggering. The swan is beating his wings upon the staggering girl. The girl is struggling to be free. Staggering means the girl is trying to be free. The girl is trying to be free. Is struggling to be free. He doesn't want to have that swan on her back. He wants to get rid of this swan. He is struggling. If he is, if she is honored, why will she struggle to be free? So the words are telling us that Lida was not feeling honored. Lida was not feeling honored. If she was feeling honored, when she was copulated in that way by that God, then she would not struggle to be free. When does a woman struggle to be free from the classes of a man? When the lady is not willing to do sex with him. So this lady is struggling to be free. Her wings caressed by the dark webs and her thighs lead us. Just one minute. Sorry, her thighs careless and lead us see that her thighs are being careless. Her thighs are being caressed by the dark webs, her neck caught in his bill, and Lida's neck is caught in the bill of the swan. The swan is on the back of Lida, catching Lida's neck in his bill, and his wings are beating, and he holds her helpless breast upon his breast. And now that swan is helping, that holding her helpless breast upon his breast. So this is a picture of the copulation of a duck with another duck. I have already said that W. Years was an artist and he used to draw pictures even in his poems with words. He has given a description and from the description we can see a complete picture of that event that we see in our society. Look her helpless breast. Lida is feeling helpless. So look at the uh, two words, a staggering girl and a helpless. Lida is struggling to be free and she is feeling very helpless. If she feels helpless, 
then she is not feeling honored. If leader was laughing, then you could say that yes, she was feeling honored, dignified by being shagged in that way by, uh, by, by, by that swan. But as she's feeling uh, tortured, she's feeling helpless, she is struggling to be free, that means she doesn't want to enjoy this pain. How can those terrified vague fingers pull the faded glory from her loosening thighs? Look at the words again. All these words are very important. How can those terrified, terrified, Lida is terribly frightened, scared when she has seen a swan on her back copulating her. Terrified. If she's feeling scared, frightened, terrified, is she feeling honored? If she feels terrified, she's not feeling honored. And again, she's trying to push the faded glory away from her loosening thighs. The swan is so powerful that when the swan is creating pressure on the thighs of leader, leader's thighs are getting loosed. That means her thighs are loosening under the pressure created by the swan. Nevertheless, leader is trying to push away the faded glory from her back. If it could be possible for her, she would have caught the swan and threw it away. But she cannot. Because how can those terrified vague fingers, terrified vague fingers means her fingers are hidden in the white feathers of the swan. The feathered glory, glory means as it is God and it, it is a swan having feathers, so feathered glory from her loosening thighs. And how can body, look body, the word body is again very important. What is the meaning of body? Body means not shorim, body means middle body. You know, if, if a newspaper we see that the popes have discovered five bodies from the Burigonga, body means dead bodies. Lida is now very much like a dead body. In the first stanza, she was a human being. She was trying to behave like a human being by trying to uh, come out of the classes of the swan. She was struggling to be free. She was struggling to push away that swan from her back. She was trying to save her honor. At that time, she was a human being. But when she's completely defeated to the force of that great swan, now she is lying there, okay? Very much like a dead body. Lida now does not have her soul in her body, does not have any mind in her body. Lida does not have any passion, any emotion. It is a dead body with which the swan is doing the sex now. Okay, it is now not a human body. It is a dead body with which the swan is doing that. But so how can body laid in the white trash but feel the strange heart beating while it lies? What can Lida do now? But feel the strange heart beatings while it lies. Lida now only feels the strange heart beating. Lida is now out of breath. Her heart is beating very fast when she's being dishonored in that way, insulted in that way, and she is lying there like a dead body as if she lost everything that she had. She doesn't have any mind. But people have interpreted for 4,000 years this fact as a kind of honor to Leda. If it was honor to Leda, then Leda would have her mind in this activity. Leda would have enjoyed it with her emotion, with her feelings, but Leda did not have that. A shadow in the lines engenders there. These lines are very important. So these are the things that are happening to Leda. What are the results of these things that are happening to Leda? You will always see, perhaps I'll not have any chance to I teach you any sonnet. The sonnet is divided into two parts. The first part, that one's octave, eh? nails and event, and the set state, which consists of the six lines, eh? narrates the results of the description. Okay. So, so Lida was being raped in that way. What is the result of this rape? You will see there. A shudder in the lines engenders there. Lines means female sex organ. A shudder. Lida feels a kind of shudder, a kind of pain in her sex organ. And something is generating there. Something is being created there. You know, um, copulation 
is a process of generation, okay, procreation. Copulation is a process of procreation. Somebody, that means the woman conceives, conceives babies in her arm when she is being copulated by a person. So what is she conceiving now? A shot in the lines in genders there. What is she conceiving? The broken one. Look, this line is very suggestive, very metaphorical. Lida is conceiving. When that swan is doing it with her, she is conceiving. What is she conceiving? She is conceiving the broken one. She is conceiving the broken one. She is not actually conceiving any human baby in her arm. She is conceiving the broken one. The burning roof and tower. She is conceiving the burning roof and tower. And Agamemnon date. Agamemnon date. She is also conceiving the date of Agamemnon. I said, Lida conceived, and Helen and Clytemnestra were born out of this meeting between Lida and Zeus. Okay, that means Lida conceived Helen, who was responsible for the destruction of Troy. That means Lida was on that day conceiving the destruction of Troy. Lida was not conceiving Helen. Lida was conceiving the destruction, the burning roof and tower of Troy. That day when that God was raping her, she was conceiving not a human baby, but the destruction of Troy, the burning roof and tower of Troy. She was also conceiving the death of Agamemnon because Clytemnestra, who was born with Helen out of that matting, Clytemnestra was the wife of Agamemnon and Clytemnestra killed her husband, Agamemnon. Helen destroyed Troy and Clytemnestra. Eh? Clytemnestra killed her own husband. A very good thing she did. She killed her husband. So this W.B. Yates is saying that actually Helen Lida did not conceive Helen and Clytemnestra that day. Lida conceived the destruction of Troy and the death of Agamemnon on that day. Very suggestive, metaphoric, these lines are. Can you imagine how beautifully W.B. Yates has expressed this uh, idea that Lida was conceiving not a human babies. Lida was conceiving the death of Agamemnon and the destruction of Troy. So how did Lida feel that day when she was tortured in that way? She was having the pain or experience of, of, of the burning of something, as if something was burning in her when she was being tortured in that way by that swan. Come to the last three lines. W. Yates has asked a question, and this question is a question that W. Yates has not answered. It is left to the readers to be answered. It is you who have to answer this question. And still today, we try to find out a good answer to this question asked by W. Yates, being so caught up, being so caught up. You have seen how Lida was caught, being so caught up, being so cut off, she was caught from behind. She, her neck was caught in her wheel. Uh, the swan was uh, breathing his wings and was doing sex with Lida. So being so cut off and so mustard by the brute blood of the year and mustard, so mustard, so mustard, what should I say? Actually, the good uh, meaning of this word is not now coming to me, so mastered by the brood, so mastered, so treated. Lida was treated in that way. So treated by the brood, you know the meaning of brood? How dare W. E. Yates call the God brood? Jews who was respected, honored, worshipped by the um, Greek and the Romans for thousands of years as the supreme God, that God is called a brood. W. E. Yates is calling that God a brute. If he had not been a brute, he would not have come down in the form of a swan to rape a mortal being. So, so mustard by the brute blood of the year. 
Through blood of the year, you know, God does not live on the earth, but lives in the earth. So must start by the brute blood of the year. Lida was caught and treated thus by the brute blood of the year. So being so caught up, and so must start by the brute blood of the year. Did she put on his knowledge with his power? Could she put on his knowledge with his power? Lida, could Lida put on the knowledge of the God with his power? Lida conceived the power of the God. Could Lida conceive the knowledge of the God as he was the supreme God? He was wise. Eh? He was wise. Nobody could understand what that God thinks. So obviously God is wise. So could Lida conceive the wisdom of the God? Lida conceived the power of the God. Lida conceived the brutality of the God. But could Lida conceive the wisdom of God? Before the indifferent beak could later drop, before that God finished eh, that copulation, could Lida conceive the wisdom of God? The answer is no. Lida conceived only the brutality, the destructiveness of that God. Lida could not conceive the wisdom of that God. Lida conceived the brutality and destructiveness of that God. That is why her daughter Helen destroyed Troy and another daughter killed her husband. This is the brutality that she conceived. But her daughter could not be as wise as, as father was. Her daughters could not be as intelligent, as wise as the father was because it was an unholy action. It was an unholy action and so this unholy action a thing that would take its birth would be a bad thing, an unholy thing. It cannot be a good thing. If the source is not a good source, holy source, from that source you cannot get a holy thing. So an illegitimate, unlawful, immoral activity, eh? you cannot have a good thing. An immoral, unlawful, a beastly action cannot result into a good thing. Never. It is never possible for one to have a sacred thing, a good thing from an unholy action. Okay. It, that is what W.B. Gates has mentioned. What W.B. Gates wants to mean here is that, you know, you know, through sexual intercourse, not only physical properties are transmitted to the newborn babies, even invisible properties are also transmitted to the newborn babies. A, the day a mother conceives, okay, on that day, the baby that she is conceiving is being shaped both physically and intellectually. The day a mother conceives a baby, on that very day, on that very moment, the baby she is conceiving will be shaped both physically and intellectually. You will see if the father had a curly hair, the son will also have a curly hair. If the father's ears are stiff, long, the son's hair, the ears may be stiff and long. If the father has a mole hair, the son may have a mole hair. It means if a father, if, you know, if a father has a broken voice, the son may have a broken voice. Even you will see that a son works very much in the way the father works. A father talks very much in the way, that means a son talks very much in the way his father talks. It means not only physical properties are transmitted through the sexual intercourse from the father to the baby. Even invisible properties, for example, your voice, your character, your personality, the way you think, the way you feel. My son thinks very much in the way I think. My son feels very much in the way I feel. My son behaves very much in the way I behave. So it is also transmitted. I think from the very beginning of the day. So if the father is intelligent, the son will also be intelligent. And if the father is, okay, we 
Uh, Hitler said, son, that will be. Uh, there is a proverb in our Bangla that Gobore uh, Poddofu John Mai. A uh, rose that grows in a cow dung looks like a rose, but the heart of the rose is different from the heart of the rose that grows in a garden. Gobore Poddofu John Mai, in the Poddofu, the Dekti Shudu Poddofu and Motonai, would Acharon Poddofu and Motona. The smell of the rose that grows in cow dung is not as sweet as the smell of the rose that grows in your garden. So the bath has to be very holy, sacred, and legitimate. When somebody is participating or is getting involved in this process, in this activity, the activity has to be very sacred, holy. Otherwise, if a mother conceives to a rave, the baby that she will give birth to may not be as psychologically, intellectually solvent as that person who raped her. W.B. Yeats has asked this question, could she cons put on his knowledge along with his power, that power, brutality of the God she put on but she could not put on the knowledge of that God. It's a wonderful poem. W.B. Yeats in this short poem has described the birth of that civilization and many significant things that happen in that civilization. At the same time, he has given his own ideology about human uh, birth. Okay, that means the process of the procreation that we human beings here have. He has also talked about his own idea of civilization. So, so many things WBS has talked about in this short poem. This poem again proves him to be a great poem, great poet. Is there any time that I can teach you another poem? No, sir, we have 10 minutes left on the... 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, I do not need to... Okay, so uh, you will not be able to take the, another poem if I teach you. 